Indonesia bans premarital sex and new criminal code. Boo. Boo. <sighs> On December 6th, Indonesia's national legislator passed a new criminal code that will criminalize premarital sex. The new code will apply to Indonesians and also foreigners. The punishment for sex outside of marriage could be up to a year in prison. It's like six months to a year. Aside from premarital sex, the new code would also penalize the cohabitation of unmarried couples, uh, insulting or expressing opinions against the president or the state, and staging protests without a permit. Critics criticized these specific provisions of the criminal code as being against civil liberties. Business groups, newspaper outlets, human rights activists, and legal experts agreed that this new criminal code could inflict damage on Indonesia's reputation as a destination for both vacation and investment. However, some Indonesian officials defended the new criminal code. Can you believe this shit? I mean, I don't, like, do these people hate money? Yeah, well, they gotta. You gotta because hate money. Like Indonesia is a major destination for tech entrepreneurship and business hub and investment destination. And like it's it its economy has grown significantly. A lot of it because of attracting tourism and uh, business professionals and meetings and a negotiation hub for different companies why so many so many rich people and future rich people have chose indonesia as not just their destination to visit but as a place to set up shop and do business because of its welcoming nature to all this investment and business activity and tourism this is like a huge red flag this is like a sign like do not come here like people who are not muslim who do not have a problem like you when, like when foreigners like americans canadians europeans like obviously a lot of them want to have sex before marriage why would they chose choose indonesia as a destination if this is under law books like if this is like a you're I, I don't like do you understand how many people are gonna be like okay i'm not gonna i guess i'm not gonna go to indonesia i guess i'm not gonna go there do you know how many young couples would like to live in indonesia and, and oh my and, god and, and, and they're like okay but we're a, we're a couple but we're not married are like that and some people are like oh it won't be enforced well do you want to try and figure that out like th you don't understand if it's Hell not no. being enforced Okay, some people, are, uh, we don't know how how much this is going to be enforced, okay? But this is even more stupid if it's not being enforced. Because you are, you are, like, people are like, oh, don't worry, don't worry, I mean, like, like Pakistani, the uh, Patriot Force in the live chat here saying, it's not going to be enforced. Okay, first of all, we don't know, okay? But it's more idiotic if it's not being enforced because you're not getting this, what you think is the benefits, the Islamic values from it, and you're getting all of the harm. What moron would, would want to try to see if this is actually being enforced or not? They already are going to, people don't want to go to jail. Why would they look at this as an option for tourism or an option for living as an entrepreneur, as a young entrepreneur? All the entrepreneurs that Indonesia has um, um, attracted, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are young, age before marriage. They're not going to give up sex because of Islam. So why would they want to live there? And how many how many of them are going to leave Indonesia because of this? Like, what is up with this? Do these, like, this must to me suggest that the Islamic forces in Indonesia are becoming stronger than the force of money. Jesus. Okay? So that is, that is scary. Like, if Islam is having such a major influence right now, and Malaysia and in and Indonesia more than invest more than the forces of investment and money that that shows how destructive Islam could be one thing that's really important to understand is that um with the premarital sex ban that um and people are bringing up this up in the live chat is that who it 
the law, the criminal code, the new criminal code is very specific in saying that the only people that can credibly re report you for this kind of a quote unquote, quote unquote crime is basically your first degree of family. So that would yeah. be like your parents. The mother your children, of the, da, da, da. Yeah, let's say. And it did, no, no, let me finish. This is mm -hmm. supposed to be a way to prevent people from just turning people in and just making stuff up and just using rumors and da, da, da. Sure. But like parents do this against their children all the time. They utilize the state to enforce their will against their children all the time in many different countries. This happens constantly in India. It doesn't even have to be against your children, okay? You could do it against the guy that is sleeping with your daughter right so yeah for example so let's say you're a young entrepreneur from the uk right and you go to indonesia okay you're like oh this is a good hub like they have a very good nomad tech nomad culture i want to go and work there me, me, make a lot of connections indonesia is famous for that right you go there like oh maybe i'll like chat up with some cute indonesian girls okay Next thing you know, your father or your father might be reporting you, right? Oh, my God. I, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, people like this will not be enforced. If it's up for reporting by the parents, then they are forced to enforce it. There's a, this idiot in the live chat again is like, oh, um, it's like it's going to be like Pakistan. Just because they don't enforce it in Pakistan, they were not going to enforce it in Indonesia. You don't know that. And also, if they are ba basing it off of reporting by the parents, then the parents, if they report it, they would want a follow-up. They're like, excuse me, I am making a report. What? And this is the law. Like, this is not, they're making it semi-civil law, right? It's not like just criminal law. It's like, because it's based on the report of the parents, if the parents come and enforce it, now that you have this on the book, if the then the now the parents have grounds for uh, complaining to the government about like hey I made an official report against these people how come you're not enforcing their laws on the book like now that person has enough legal merit to push the government about like why is my complaint not being taken seriously right mm -hmm. and we, I don't know if the, can you use this as a way to like shake uh, take some money from to, like tourists. You know, um, you could be a, like a father that just like you uses your daughter as a way to go and flirt with tourists. And as soon as you get them, you're like, OK, you just had sex with my daughter, sir. I'm about to go talk, speak to the government. Maybe unless uh, me, I don't know, I could be convinced otherwise. But right now I'm fearing, feeling very much like I'm going to go report this. This could be well, a father daughter. Insidious. This could be a father-daughter operation um, in action. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so one thing that is important is that um, this law is not set to be enforced for another three years, but this has been passed. Um, I want to read a few things about, like, statements about why, uh, you know, about why this happened or their aims, da, da, da. So, quote, the aim is to protect the institution of marriage and Indonesian values while at the same time being able to protect the privacy of the community and also negate the rights of the public or other third parties to report this matter or playing the judge on behalf of morality. Um, it's not easy for a multicultural and multi-ethnic country to make a criminal code that accommodates all interests. So, like... Oh my god this is this is multiculturalism like <laughs> and this is supposed to be like a moderate islamic country but they have a province where you get lashes for premarital sex already um oh eggs uh, egg is cosmic in the live chat is saying by the way i'm indonesian on the news the government tries to justify this by saying that this is progress for indonesia because now we use our own law instead of dutch colonial law Oh my God, this is like the worst application of de <laughs> decolonization theory I've ever seen. Holy crap. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Yeah, not, not great. Not a fan. And one thing that I was thinking about, the other thing that's not getting as much of a headline is preventing people from cohabitating before marriage. And I think that that's such... Oh my God, 
I, that's just so backward and also really unfortunate for so many people who economically this is how they have to survive right as a couple and so now they're just going to be forced into the institution of marriage whether or not they want it because this is how they can afford their lease or whatever it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous um indonesia and malaysia are like going islam is like taking over personal people's personal lives more and more i heard in, in malaysia they come like they have private companies coming in and checking uh, offices are like coming in and making sure your offices are you know sharia compliant and checking everything for you giving you advice like imagine if you're like a big company in the united states right like uh, and you have offices in indonesia and like i don't know what these islamic mumbo jumbo is so you get the consultant coming in and just be like okay this is now i just made your office sharia compliant <laughs> Oh my god, so what a fucking waste of resources. <laughs> I know, right? God damn it. And Indonesia has so much potential. You have no idea. Like, guys, there's so Indonesia is on on the way to becoming an economic superpower in East Asia. Okay. And don't slow it down with stupid crap like this. <laughs> Zagros is saying it's Sharia OSHA. <laughs> For those who aren't from the United States, that's a, the department that is for like worker and labor safety. <laughs> um, oh, Almond Milk brings up a good point. What if Indonesia decolonized from Islam? That's a good comeback. That's pretty Almond amazing. Milk. You're starting to you're starting to ask some good questions. You're th starting to think a little bit too critically. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Agus is also bringing up a very good point. Saying actually, they tried to pass the laws since 2019. But during the time, the students managed to organize a massive protest against it. So they delayed it and revised a bit. And the other thing that's really concerning is the severe restrictions that are now included on freedom of speech against like insulting or criticizing the president or the state. Like that is so deeply insidious and I'm not going to go on my full free speech like soapbox right now, but obviously if you have a problem with say the premarital sex ban and you don't have the ability to criticize the state because that is now criminalized, what ability do you have to redress the government and say, hey, I'm not pleased with what you're passing. This isn't representative of my values. This isn't representative of the wills of my community. Now you can't even voice that. So now you can't even fight for your own rights. So this is why, or, you know, a quick explanation of why free speech is the bedrock of a liberal society. Um, and the most important value, in my opinion. But before we go to the next segment, very importantly, Secular Sakai gave us a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Secular Sakai. Thank you, Secular Sakai. He, uh, he is asking, is this going to increase prostitution via temporary marriages in hotels like what has happened in some other Islamic countries? Personally, no. I have no idea if temporary marriage is frequent or common in Indonesia, but no, I don't imagine I, so. That's Indonesia is mostly sunny. Yeah, temporary marriage is mostly a Shia thing. Uh, Sunnis yeah. actually, what well, actually many Sunnis um, who are anti-Shia use the idea of temporary marriage in Shia Islam as a way to show how vile and disgusting Shia Islam is. They're like, oh, look at how can this be Islam? They have legalized prostit, they have legalized prostitution. This is like obviously, this is obviously they don't have the right Islam if they have legalized prostitution. So. That's mostly, yeah. Um, yeah, so, exactly. But thank you again for the super chat. I mean, the um, Shias, they do be doing some weird stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is we can all agree on. <laughs> yeah. it's, tempor it's, it's temporary marriage for a fee. So Sunnis are like, that's just prostitution. Prostitution with, with extra steps. With, with extra steps. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh look at this this is so cute he's so upset that he i call them stupid oh like this is like <laughs> oh it's so butter i love it when this guy gets like he's like i'm so smart i got good grades in school i'm not he started listing off his degree 
<laughs> this is there's a literally a subreddit for this. There, uh, there's a subreddit called I am smart, and people are like, Oh, do you know I have this? I got good grades in school, and I have this degree. I'm not stupid, you stupid. <laughs> You're right. This is literally the face of the subreddit. I am smart. Go check it out. You sound like exactly like that. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm sorry. Crying. Such a cry baby. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese god, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.